It's October 2nd. What happened to September? Hey there, welcome to the show. This is Les Solgrove. This is Simply Des Moines and Via Realtors weekly market update, the show that we talk about central Iowa real estate and what's happened in the uh, the local market as well as maybe what's happening nationally, which we'll kind of talk about today just a little bit. So, hey, it's a big it's a big show. We got a lot of stuff to cover this week because it's end of month. So let's get jumping on it right now. This is the week 39 dashboard and not much has changed this week, but we are still creeping up on that months of inventory for all homes. And it's not going to be long. We're going to be in a uh, an even market. I suspect that's going to happen here in the next couple of weeks. And so, you know, let's just kind of keep our eye on that as well here. Uh, let's see. So let's jump right in because, like I said, we've got a lot to cover this week. It's the end of September, month in review. Here we go. Uh, this is what the numbers look like a year ago versus September 30th. You know, 12,944 homes closed at 12,313 closed so far this year we're behind i've got another graphic that will kind of go into that in detail the the far right one at the bottom there that that 1125 and kind of the gold uh number that's the number of offers accepted in the last 30 days and that's probably one of the bigger differences we're about 300 offers per week um uh or at any time not per week but at any time before behind last year so last year on september 30th we were at 1440 homes offers accepted within a 30-day period and this year we're running about 1125 so the market has definitely slowed down just a little bit speaking of homes for sale here's where we kind of stand right now and this is going to be just kind of an overview we're going to hit some of these pretty quick this is our overall homes for sale we're 100 557 homes for sale more on the books right now than we were a year ago. We did break through the 2750 uh, mark this past week and I suspect you know someone had um, guessed early on back in uh, July or, or late August when we would hit 3,000 homes for sale. I think those times are coming really really fast because we're starting to see inventory again start to build back up again. You can kind of see the month of September was a building month where the month of August there was kind of flat. Uh, so it's not going to take long before we get back up into that 3,000 homes for sale. This is the breakdown of, of where we were last year versus this same time uh, of this year. So uh, number of homes for sale currently on the market were 1199. That's 158 more than last year. Um, the condo townhomes market is still uh, very, very hot. We're actually behind inventory. That's the only category we're behind on this year at 150, but it's almost the same at 157 from a year ago. The category that has the most uh, increase, the highest increase in inventory for our marketplace so far this year versus last year is the new homes category. And you can see at 1114, um, it's still behind the uh, existing homes, although it's starting to catch back up again. Uh, a year ago, we only had 786 uh, new construction homes on the market, so that's kind of a kind of a big number difference there this year, and that's the one that's really kind of helping us continue to uh, increase our our listing inventory. Even new condo townhomes are up by um, 78 over last year. Uh, I always like to break down, and I got to get my head out of the way there. You can kind of see the uh, breakdown of homes for sale by price point and how they compare to last year in fact let me just remove my head all completely there you can see at 65 homes in the above a million a year ago when we have 67 this year so we're right on track pretty much with our with our higher end until you get down to that 800 to 900 thousand dollar price point we have way way more homes in that price point this year at 64 versus 17 a year ago same thing with that seven to eight hundred thousand dollar price point 71 versus 28 a year ago um, and then we start to kind of see you know where that inventory is building uh, the three to four hundred thousand dollar price point which is kind of a combination of both the new construction and the existing home sales is at 806 this year versus 569 a year ago and then you get down below that 
and inventory is actually lower this year still uh, under that $300,000 price point. So that's why we're still seeing a lot of home sales uh, with multiple offers under that 300. I wouldn't say a lot, but we're, it's not uncommon to see multiple offers. We're probably not seeing the um, um, overpriced, you know, listing or offer over list price uh, point as much. We're still seeing a little bit of that, but not nearly as much as we move forward here. I'll keep my head out again for this one because it, it'll cover up the graphic there. This is the number of sale pendings by price point. And again, you can kind of see that that upper price point is actually outperforming last year until you get down to that seven to $800,000 price point where we only have 10 homes under contract where we had 17 a year ago, pretty even uh, in the six to seven. And then it kind of drops um, that five to six, kind of back to even. So there's a little back and forth there. Um, but that three to four hundred thousand dollar price point, we're we're well below where we were at this time last year. Same with that two to three hundred, and um, yeah, actually the rest of these categories all the way down to the zero uh, dollar mark there are behind last year's. Not by a lot, but um, with just the increase of inventory, you would think maybe those would start to pick up. But they're just just really we're still struggling into that under under three hundred thousand dollar price point there. So. So the inverted market watch here. This is the the graphic that we that I started uh, that I created back in 2020, and this is, shows you where our sell pending inventory was actually. Uh, we had more counting, more sell pending counts on the books than we had homes for sale, and you can kind of see there that um, near the end of 2022 here, we've actually gone back to a normal market, which is not inverted. And we'll take one more look at that just a little bit close up here just for this year only. We're currently at 2,784 homes currently on the market and 2,159 under con uh, that are under contract. So that's a, you know, a, about a 600 count swing for, from where we were back on week 29 when we were just be at week 29 and 30 when we were just starting to become an even market again there. So um, are we going to go back into an inverted market the rest of this year? Likely not. Will we go into it in 2023? I don't think so, the way the market's going. You know, with the rise of inventory, I just don't see us, um, and, and the you know, mortgage interest rates and things like that, I just don't see us selling at the same pace. So we are probably, uh, all things considered, are probably at the peak of our, well, I would say a 10-year real estate cycle, but it's probably about a 15 or 16-year real estate cycle. We're really right at that peak, I believe, at this stage. The uh, numbers again here, and again, I'll move my head out of the picture. September monthly activity by listing status for September 30th. Um, this is really kind of breaks it down. You can see the new listings. We've, uh, we were currently sitting at 926 for the month, um, uh, September 22nd. Where a year ago we were at 849, our pending sales again are down, you know, our closed sales are down. The one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit was I've kind of figured that our price increases would have been um, up quite a bit a year ago, but it's just kind of traditional that in the fall market you don't see a lot of price increases. Where we only had 100 homes where we had price increases last year, we're only at 73 uh, this past month. So. Um, but we are seeing quite a few uh, price reductions coming back to play. So, you know, price those homes right because if they don't sell right away, they're going to stay on the market for some time. And and uh, I'll be working on near the year end here. I'll be working on a graphic that talks about um, you know the the difference between list price and sale price when there are um, price reductions and what kind of a percentage loss there is when you don't get it priced right right off the bat. There. Uh, back here to the months of inventory, we kind of talked about that at the very beginning. Again, we're at two and a half months of inventory. We've been kind of on the rise to that. We never uh, got this. We never had this much months of inventory all of last year. You know, the highest we were at last year was, I think, 2.2, uh, maybe 2.3 months of inventory. We're at two and a half, and we're kind of on the rise, and we will soon be in that even market again. Uh, by year end with the markers of zero to three months for a seller's market, four to six for an even market, and six above for a, um, a buyer's market. We will probably change that back uh, this coming year, back to uh, um, you know zero to four as becoming a, a, a seller's market, just because of the way the market's coming back here. So this breaks down again here, um, months of inventory, again, that two and a half, but when you break it down by the categories, one and a half, one, 8.8 .8 for new homes 
and over, just over a year of inventory for the new condo townhomes because we just have we have way more condo townhomes out there that are actually selling uh, that we have buyers for at this point in time. So that's um, you know probably an area where if you're a new construction condo townhome buyer, you can probably find some deals out there uh, right now because we have a lot of inventory on that. Closed sales year to date. Uh, again, this one is is a common graphic that I show you each week. But if you look at the very top of uh, of the left bar on each of those categories, you can see how far ahead or behind we are uh, compared to last year. This is our year to date closed sales overall. We're 631 homes behind last year, and again, this puts us right on track to be right around that 16,000 closed sales versus 17 that we had last year. Existing homes are still struggling to keep up with last year's pace, as are um, uh, existing condo townhomes. The new construction's pretty much holding its own. It's only 10 away from the same where it was last year. However, one thing to note on this one, um, new construction closed sales had really tracked well ahead of last year all through most of the summer. And then as we moved into fall, it started to slow down again. And so it wasn't just a couple of weeks ago we actually dropped below um, the year-to-date close for new construction homes. And uh, our new construction condo townhomes, even though we have a lot of inventory, um, buyers are buying that up a little bit more this year than last year. Although, again, remember we have way, way, way more inventory out there than it's being, uh, it's being bought up with a 12.9 months of inventory. Well, we can't end the show this week without talking about mortgage interest rates. This past week, uh, the um, Freddie Mac announced the national average mortgage rate at 6.7%. And I thought, well, let's let's take a look at that in a little bit different format than we normally do. We'll go. We will look at the uh, the one the graphic that I always bring out each week or every time we talk about rates. But this one kind of hits at home. This shows you from January through September, kind of. Where those rates are compared to last year at last year yeah we were right around that three percent interest rate and the highest it got last year was 3.17 that was back in march and um, here we are at the end of september at 6.7 percent nationally uh, the national average of a 30-year fixed rate mortgage rate and what does that mean for purchase power well here we go there's that purchase power drop showing that back in january when rates were 3.22 percent uh, a $1,200 a month, 30-year fixed rate, principal and interest only payment uh, at that 3.22% would allow you to borrow $276,777, where today at 6.7%, that drops all the way down <clears throat> to $185,966, which is a purchase power drop. It's choking me up. $90,811 is, is the purchase power. That's a major, major drop in the ability to purchase. So almost, you know, not, not I won't even say it's 100000 yet, but I, are we going to hit that 100000 It's very possible if rates continue to, to rise. Uh, the last one to kind of look at that is a little bit more simplified is um, showing you uh, that purchase power graphic only without the overlay of the interest rates show. So the same $1,200 payment just kind of give you, an, give you an idea of as the year goes by here where our purchase power is gone. And um, so uh, not to leave it on the show on kind of a, a note like that, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it for there for now. Next week we're going to come back and go over the third quarter review. Uh, this was a lot of slides this week. I went through them very, very fast. Next week, we're going to um, look at just quarter three. And if you want to see all the graphics from, from month end so far, go to Des Moines marketvalues.com. That's where all those graphics live. And uh, as well as this, um, this YouTube video, as well as all the previous week's videos. So if you want to look back at quarter two and kind of see what happened next week and then watch quarter three or look at the graphics, that's all there at Des Moines marketvalues.com. So anyway, hey, thanks for joining me. Next week I may have a uh, special announcement. I don't think it's going to be a breaking news thing, but we'll probably have some kind of a special announcement. So I hope you'll join me on um, next week as we talk about the third quarter review and some uh, pretty significant news that's going to be happening here uh, in the next um, next 30 days here. So give me a uh, give me some thumbs up down there on the uh, YouTube chat or the YouTube um, channel, and be sure and leave any comments you have at the bottom of the show. And we'll talk to you all again next week. Thanks again.